In November of 2023, ChatGPT introduced a new option called GPTs. You can basically create custom mini applications and train them with your own data and your own instructions using the new GPT builder. Each GPT has its own specific function. And while the current level of functionality is pretty small, you're really only limited by your imagination. While the GPT store isn't available yet at the time of recording this, I've already generated tens of thousands of dollars selling my own custom GPTs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own GPT step-by-step, -step, and I'll even share with you my secret method for monetizing them today. What's going on, everybody? This is Josh Rosenberg, the AI guy. And before I really get into this, uh, I would love if you could do me a quick favor, help the channel out by hitting that like button, clicking subscribe, and if you hit that little bell icon, you'll never miss a video. So how do we create our own custom GPTs? What are they? What is everything going on? And how do we make money with them? Well, first, you have to have a GPT Pro account. So as you can see up here, uh, we have our options of GPT-4, 3.5. If you don't have a Pro account, this is what you'd be using for the free account. And then uh, you've got your plugins, right? So that's how you know if you've got the Pro account, it costs about $20 a month. And when you have that set up, you're gonna see over here in your left-hand column, this is gonna look a little bit different, all right? These, everything here, the GPT that I've pinned, to my left-hand column because I'm gonna be using it fairly often. But you're gonna see this option right here called Explore GPTs. And when you click on it, this is where you actually come to find all the available GPTs. So while they're sorted right up here um, by really what the functionality is, you can also um, scroll down, you can see the trending ones, Canva's been hugely popular. You can have a lot of these art design ones. And so you can really find what uh, people are using the most. Now, when the GPT store comes out, it's not gonna be like the iTunes app store where you can go ahead and just create a GPT and sell it for any price that you want. Instead, ChatGPT is gonna do a rev share model with the week's most popular GPT. So if you're trying to compete against someone like Kayak, which is a large corporate or Canva, you're have, gonna have an uphill battle. That's where my secret method for selling them actually comes in. Well, let's say that we are looking for something in particular, and let's just say we like this logo creator. I would click on it, and now I am brought to the actual GPT itself. What I would do from here is, if I really like this one, I'm gonna click on the little uh, tab up here, and I'm gonna put keep in sidebar. And now we would have the logo creator added to the sidebar. If we don't want any more, we click on the three little dots and we say hide from sidebar. So that's how we find GPTs that we want and we are able to add them to our sidebar so we can begin using them. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I've created. So when we go back to explore GPTs, if you look now in the top right corner, we have two options, create and my GPTs. And with my GPTs, we can see these are all the ones that I've created. And so I've had quite a bit of practice at this. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a new GPT. So here we are at the create a GPT window. This has two sides to it. The first is our create side. This is on the left. And we have basic create, which is where it defaults you to, which is awesome because we're gonna be able to use a simple prompt to create this GPT. Configure allows us to do a little bit more fine tuning and we'll look at that a little bit later. So when we are here in the create feature um, or the create screen rather, it's gonna ask what we'd like to make. So I'm just going to paste in some copy that I have. Basically, we're gonna ask it to simplify complex concepts and break them down to clearly explain the concepts in a chosen field, making them understandable to both experts and laypersons. So we're gonna have it just explain something complicated to us a, in a very simplistic way. And uh, ChatGPT is actually going through and understanding what it is I'm trying to accomplish here. And it's going to do all of the coding for us in the background, which is pretty awesome. All right, so it says, great, your GPT is set to simplify complex concepts and make them accessible for both experts and novices. Now, 
first thing it's going to ask you to do is pick a name. Now let's pick a name for you, GPT. How about clarifier? Does that work for you? Um, if we like that name, cool. If we're not so thrilled with that, we can call it something else. So uh, I'm going to call this one Simplify GPT. Name Simplify GPT. So now it's going to go and check and make sure that that name is still available. Because if somebody else has already taken that name, then we're not going to be able to use it. Cool. Simplify GPT it is. Now let's give it a visual identity. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a logo for this. Now it's going to um, come up with its own logo concept idea based on what it is our GPT is doing. So it's going to generate the first image. Now, if I wanted to, I can click this little uh, paperclip icon here and I would be able to upload an image. So if I had another logo that I want to use, I could upload it there. Um, but I don't for this one. So we're going to see what it comes up with. And then if we like it, we can use it and we're good to go. If not, then we can have it create a new one in a different style. Now this I'm not too thrilled with. Uh, I don't like the art style. I don't really like the, the design, the anything about this. So, uh, I think I want something more, hmm. you know what? I've kind of been on a kick for a 1970s style pop or comic book art for some reason. Uh, hey, you know what? Let's try, um, I want to see a logo and a 1970s pop art stuff. So I have no idea if this is going to look good or not. Uh, this may work. It may not, but for the sake of this, for the sake of this instruction, this tutorial, we're just going to, um, go with it. Unless the design it comes up with is absolutely horrendous. This doesn't look anything like what I was hoping for. So let's, uh, we're going to go with a futuristic look. All right. So generating this new image. Simplified GPT. This one actually does look pretty good. So we're going to say this is perfect. Let's use it. All right. So now that we're going to, we have a logo and we have a name. Now it's going to ask us a few more clarifying questions so that it knows we, we have everything that we need in order to make this work. So fantastic. We'll use this futuristic profile pic for simplified GPT. Now let's refine the context in which simplified GPT operates. What kind of complex talk, uh, topics are you most interested in having explained? So we can talk about anything uh, that's really complex. We could talk about biology or finance or physics, and it doesn't have to just be one thing. So let's talk about, we'll say um, science, uh, finance, and mathematics. It's doing this because the way that it would prepare would be drastically different if we were to say, talk about um, music or art, or how do we simplify learning another language versus figuring out an equation, right? Got to kind of have some internal notes as to how we want this to operate. And you're going to see in a few minutes how we can actually uh, train it using our own information, our own data. And this is where some of the real power of GPTs comes in. I know that this technology is fairly new, but mark my words, this is going to mark the death of the SaaS industry. We're no longer going to need these large subscription softwares for all kinds of things when we can build them ourselves. And a lot of companies are already starting to do this internally. They are uh, training it on their SOPs and whatnot. And this is going to be used to create customer service bots. Uh, Simplify GPT is now fine-tuned to handle science fiction, finance, and mathematics topics, ensuring explanations and uh, are accurate and understandable across all levels of expertise. This over here, uh, which we're about to start playing with, is the preview window. This is how we're going to be able to actually test out uh, our GPTs and make sure that they uh, function how we want them to. So right now, ChatGPT is finalizing the functionality of the GPT and it's getting it ready in the preview area or the playground area. So the first thing you're probably going to notice is that there are four options right here that is kind of giving people a quick start. This is 
if somebody comes here and they don't really know what they want or don't know how to ask it, they can click on one of these and it will uh, use that as a jumping off point. Now, I didn't create any of these. Describe quantum physics simply. Describe blockchain to a child. Simplify how rockets work. Let's just click on this. And right away, it's going to use this as a command. Now, I could have asked it to do anything else. But let's take a look at where these come into play. And so if we click on configure up here, we're going to look at the name, simplify GPT description, making complex ideas clearer or clear. All right. And then the instructions. So everything that we told it to do in that prompt, it's got here on in the instructions and our conversation starters, explain quantum physics, simply describe blockchain to a child, make AI easy to understand, simplify how rockets work. We can change these to whatever we want. We can add another one. And if we want to treat it or train it on some knowledge, this is where we would upload our files. So this is where if you're using this for your business and you want to use it for all of your SOPs, for instance, or your customer service documents, you can train it on all of your customer service documents. And now all of a sudden, ChatGPT can work as a customer service bot that you can have sitting there on your, your website, which is awesome. Uh, we also could turn on code interpreter, which will give us a little bit more advanced options. As soon as I did that, um, it's going to start this over because we're, remember, this is still a preview. Um, create new actions. This is where we get into some more advanced coding. Um, this is where we can do some really uh, authentic out of the box, uh, more big picture stuff. First, you'd have to authenticate it, as you'd see, with an API key and an OAuth key. Um, we can improve, uh, import some of our rules and stuff. So let's just say, or, you know, they give us some examples, but these are our web files or coding files that we can import um, that will allow us to use those as the basis. So let's come back here. And let's just ask it, because let's say we don't want to use any of these. We're going to ask it, um, how do engines work? Okay. So it's now going to explain how engines work in simple terms. And, you know, that's, I wish I had something like this back when I was in school, because, I mean, going through science class alone would have just been a little light years easier. So right away, here we go. Simplified GPT, it's going through step-by-step step everything about how an engine works, which is pretty awesome. All right. So now let's just say we're happy with this. We think the explanations are fantastic. We're ready to go. We're going to come back here and we're going to say, this is perfect. Let's finalize. And so when we say that uh, we're ready to go and that it's finalized, it doesn't mean that we can't still make changes. We can come back to this later on. As the developer, we, we can definitely finalize it. But now it's telling the system, GPT, that we're ready to go. And so it says, excellent, it's been finalized and it's ready for use. If you ever decide to make further revisions or refinements or have additional requirements, feel free to reach out. Okay, so up here, we can delete the GPT for one row of reason we don't want anymore. That's fine. When you go to save, there are three options. You could save it for only me. That means I'm the only person that has access to it, which is fine for certain uses. If you want to keep something very proprietary, you have everyone. And in order to allow everyone to have it, you need to um, confirm your account. So if you see here how I have um, my name and the, the name of the GPT, when you go into your settings, you're going to see something called the builder profile, right? This is where everyone's going to know your name. And so you're going to have to put your name down. And when you go to add a website down here, you can add anyone you want. You'll have to verify it. Really, all that is, is they're going to give you a little bit of text. You just go right in, into um, uh, your cPanel or uh, wherever your DNS is living. And you just paste it into a text document there. It takes a few minutes and then you click verify and you're good to go. All right. So that's how everyone could have it. But how do we monetize it? I click on this right here. Anyone with a link. Why? 
because it's not going to show up in the GPT store at all. You need to have a link for this. So you need to know, not even a name, you need to know the specific link to access the URL. And this is how we were finding it. But this case, because I think that this is pretty cool, I'm going to let it be used for everybody. And in our category, it's going to be an under education. So we're going to confirm. And now this is going to show up in the GPT store. It might take a few hours, but there we go. Simplified GPT is ready to go. It's already in our sidebar. Okay, so how do we monetize this? Remember, when we had our options, I, I said if we want to monetize it, we're going to be clicking on anyone with a link. So just a few weeks ago, I created a training showing people how to start their own YouTube channels. That's powered mostly by GPTs, all of which I created. So this was the sales page that I had. It's only a few page Google Doc. Uh, in my flagship copywriting AI program, Robot Revolution, link in the comments. I have full prompt recipes so that this work was actually done very, very quickly. Right now, you can't sign up. The registration is close to the time being. But when somebody would pay for it, they would be brought, uh, if this was a buy now button, they would be brought to a Stripe page. You could also use PayPal or any CRM that you want. Once they completed the purchase, they would receive an email that would send them a link to this page with the password. Because even though you might have the URL for this page, the only way you can access it is with the password. And so here are my training videos. If we look at the bottom, here are the GPTs. This is how they access them. And so if I wanted to have, let's say, Tube Scriptwriter, they would click on it, it would open right up, they could add it to their sidebar, and now they have access to it for good. You can see here, it's created by Josh Rosenberg, and this helps create YouTube scripts. So by putting the link to these GPTs behind a paywall, you're gonna be able to lock it off from everybody else. This way, it doesn't get out to everyone for free. It's not only used by you, anybody that paid you for it. So whatever niche you're in, you can solve small problems with GPTs. They're pretty limited. They only really have certain amount of functionality. You can't have it do 25 different things like you could a full grown, full blown application. But for certain small tasks, they are incredibly powerful. And you can create, like I said, customer service chatbots. You can have somebody that trains your new employees. You can have GPTs that help you with your hiring and onboarding process, uh, run your finances, your numbers, your profit and loss statements for you. You can have a track inventory. There's so many awesome things that you can do. Plus, they're not all uh, work related. You know, those are just the ones that are the easiest right there to explain. But you could have some that are, let's say, organizing um, your collection of certain kinds of files and whatnot. So really, you're limited by your imagination, as I said. Let me know if you've got a chance to play with GPTs before. What are some of your favorites? Let me know in the comments. And in the future, I might do another video where I go through a bunch of your favorites and we take a look at them. We explore them. This way, we can all share them and I'll get to know them better. But for right now, uh, I've been Josh Eisenberg, the AI guy, and I'll talk to you soon.